We will direct your attention to five key areas for solving your people problems. 1. First, we'll examine the forces that compel people to be difficult in such a variety of ways. Where one person starts yelling, another shuts down and says nothing, while yet another starts sniping. These fascinating differences are indicators of differing behavioral intentions that have been thwarted. Once you understand these differences, you'll be less inclined to personalize difficult behavior. 2. Then we'll examine essential communication skills that turn conflict into cooperation, emotion into reason, and hidden agendas into honest dialogue. The good news is that you use these essential skills already in your dealings with people that you get along with. The bad news is that, when dealing with problem people, the failure to use these skills is a big part of the problem. We're going to make the process of communication explicit, so you can begin to use these skills when you most need them with people at their worst. 3. Next, we'll focus on specific strategies for dealing with the 10, plus 3, most difficult behaviors of the people you can't stand. You'll learn exactly what you can do to get people to stop whining, attacking, blowing up, and breaking promises. 4. Increasingly, we define our relationships with others using the phone and email. We hope you make the most out of these tools to avoid conflict and build cooperation instead. 5. Toward the end of the book, we will address the subject of what to do when you can't stand yourself. By that time, you will probably have recognized yourself in some of the descriptions of problem people. Chapter 23 will help you identify and alter your own difficult behavior, which will help you because the less difficult you are, the fewer the number of difficult people you'll have to deal with. We recommend that you read chapters 1 through 9, then turn directly to the chapter that deals with your difficult person. Before you read on, allow us to introduce ourselves and tell you how we came to write this book. We're Rick and Rick, best friends, business partners, and naturopathic physicians. Although our profession was born in the United States over a hundred years ago, you may have never heard of it until now. We became friends while med students, but our friendship blossomed when a physician and surgeon from an area hospital became our mentor. With his guidance and encouragement, we studied health from an attitudinal point of view. We hoped to determine the principles of mental and emotional health and to find out how these principles might be used to prevent or heal physical illness. Time and again, we found that when people clarify their values, work to fulfill their goals, and learn effective communication and relaxation skills, they feel better. And as their mental and emotional health improves, many of their specific physical symptoms disappear. Since the word physician means teacher, we began sharing these ideas through seminars and workshops. In 1982, a mental health organization asked us to create a program on how to deal with difficult people. That marked the official beginning of the research project that has culminated in this book, and in the process, we changed the way we define what we do. We now view all our work as a kind of continuing education in people. For over two decades, we've been learning about people's hopes and fears, how people build their lives or destroy them, how people communicate, what makes people difficult, and how best to deal with people at their worst. We've written this book to pass that information along to you. We've presented these ideas to enthusiastic response in seminars, on tape, and in print to over a million people. It is our hope and belief that the ideas in this book will make a meaningful and lasting difference in the quality of your life.